Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, we're going to talk about the Hypershade more. We're going to go into more utilities that are available within the Hypershade and how to use them. Uh, one thing I like to do is, when I'm working extensively in the Hypershade, is to simply replace my perspective camera with the Hypershade. So I'm going to go to the Panels menu, Panel, Hypershade. So what I've done here is simply replaced my perspective camera with the Hypershade. So instead of it being a floating uh, window that you have to kind of maneuver around, you can just simply add it directly to the UI like this. Now the channel box over here is still open. I'm just going to click on this tab to close that, collapse it down. So I just have all the Hypershade visible to me. So the utility I want to focus on in today's video is the Luminance utility. It's a pretty interesting utility, I think. You can find it over here in the Create area under Utilities and look for Luminance. There it is. Click it once and I've created it here. If I zoom in real close, you can kind of see what it does here with the little icon it gives us, this RGB with an arrow pointing to a kind of grayscale gradient, a black to white gradient. Like with other nodes that we've talked about in Maya, we can expand the details of them here. You can click that a few times to expand all the options that we have available to us. But for the most part, for this one, all we really are looking at is the value in and the value out. Now, one thing that's interesting, I think, if you click on this little plus sign next to value, you can see that it's looking for a vector data type coming in to the luminance, but the out value is a floating data type. If you're not familiar with the types of data that the Hypershade uh, utilizes, I did make a little video that I posted before this one to explain those data types and how they work. This luminance utility converts vector data, RGB or XYZ data, averages it all out and then spits out a single floating data point or floating data value. So takes in a vector, spits out a floating. So how is that useful to us? Well, there's lots of ways you can utilize such a thing, but the main real reason to use it would be if you wanted to use a texture and apply that texture to an attribute that only accepts floating data or a single value and not a color value. Just for an example, I'm going to create a Lambert material. Move this over here. So the Lambert material, the only real uh, floating data attributes that it kind of has is the diffuse value here. There's also mat opacity and translucence. Let's focus on diffuse. So diffuse kind of controls this brightness level of the material. If you put it all the way up, you get full white or full uh, value of the color you choose. In this case, it's white. If you go all the way down, it's full black, no value at all. And the default, for whatever reason, is 0 0.8, which, is, which means that you're actually always seeing slightly less than the full value of the color you have selected here. If I were to choose full on white, for example, we're actually only seeing 80% white with a, diffuse, with a diffuse value of 0 0.8. I can bring it all the way up and you get that last 20% that we don't usually see. What we're gonna do here is apply a texture to the diffuse. How do we do that? Well, first we need a texture. So I'm going to go to the 2D textures category and choose a file and things are kind of getting cluttered here. Let me move this over here. So this is our going to be this is our file texture node, and I'm going to browse to a texture by clicking on this folder icon over here in the property editor, and and finding a texture to use. Okay, so here is a face texture that I that you can find at the Human Wiki project. If you just do a search for uh, Wiki Human, I think it is, you can find it there. So it's this face texture. So I'm going to apply that. Let's just say I want to apply the out color of this file to the diffuse of the Lambert, but it won't let me because this is the out color is a RGB value, a vector value. And the diffuse value is a floating value. So I can't connect a vector to a float. However, that's where the luminance utility comes in. I can connect the out color to the luminance's value and you can see here what it's done is it's taken the RGB channels of this file 
and mixed them all up and averaged them all out together and gave me this, which I can then use as a out value that can connect to the diffuse. So uh, now I've successfully taken an RGB texture and applied it to the float diffuse value of the Lambert by using a luminance utility to average those RGB channels into a single vector value that I can use as a texture. Now you notice that the fuse here says 000 because it's actually being driven by the texture itself. So wherever the texture, if we uh, click on this little S icon, we can uh, single out this, this luminance value, this luminance node. Wherever this luminance node is black, that's the diffuse value. Whatever that RGB value is, it's typically a low one. Wherever it's whiter or lighter, it will be brighter. So the, those values of the texture are driving the diffuse of the Lambert. I'll click this little S again to un-solo uh, it. We can see the material viewer here. So I can change this color instead of it being just a simple gray. Let's make it like a blue. And it's being affected. The color itself is simply blue. The diffuse is what's being driven by the texture and not the color. But in any case, the point though is that we're driving this float value with a texture by using this luminance node in between to convert our RGB values, our vector values to a float value. So that is the luminance utility. I think it's a very useful utility, especially for these kinds of situations. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments about this utility, or if you do have requests for what future utilities we talk about, uh, some sooner than later, let me know. I'm definitely wanting to uh, focus my content on what you guys want to see. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.